Good evening and welcome to New Life. I'm Terry Knight, the pastor here at New Life Community Church. I thank you so much for turning us on, tuning us in. I trust, as always, that the Lord's going to bless you up one side and down the other as we fellowship together here for the next several moments. Last week we began a new teaching here on New Life that deals with the subject of our living orders, what we as followers of Christ are to be doing with our time as we wait upon the return of the Lord. I do believe the Lord's coming back at some point in time. As you read through the scriptures, that's very, very apparent. But what are we to do in the meantime? Well, we've been sharing with you, don't just stand there. Our text passage is Acts chapter 1. I'm going to actually read one verse in your hearing tonight. We're going to jump right back into the back half of this teaching. Acts chapter 1, verse number 11, puts it this way. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. He's coming back. Are you prepared for that? Are you living for that? I want to be an encouragement to you to live your life that way. Pray with me. We're going to get right into this teaching. Father, we pray that you'd speak to our hearts tonight by your word. Prepare us not only for eternity, but for living day by day, moment by moment, as we await your return. We pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, you be blessed. I'll be back here in just a little while to wrap things up. The old version calls it Holy Ghost. That scares some people off. They think about Casper or something. If you're my age, soon by Holy Spirit, they begin to receive revelation that God's plan is universal, meaning it wasn't just for the Jews, but Jew and Gentile alike. God's plan was eternal. It wasn't just about this earthly existence, this present existence. They begin to understand that God's plan would serve to bring glory and honor to God, not to some man-made, human-centered political machine. Are you with me? So, think it not strange, if indeed you do, or rude, or condescending, that Jesus answered their question in the manner in which he did. We're told, they ask, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Logical question for them if you understand their mindset. Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Notice verse 7 and what Jesus said to them. It's incredible. He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. I don't know what his inflection was there. I don't know what the look was on his face. Every now and then, Donna says to me that I'm giving her that look. And I suggest to you, doesn't it just make sense if I had another look besides this one, I'd use it? I don't know how he was looking at it. I don't know how this come across at all. But at first, in my mind, it sounds a bit sarcastic and perhaps condescending. We ask you a question and Jesus says, it's not for you to know right now. What if you'd asked me a question this morning? Pastor Terry, uh, uh, is it time for such and such? And I'd say to you, well, it's none of you. It's, it's, not, it's not any of your business right now. Woo. Boy, that'd breed unity at New Life, wouldn't it? <laughs> you wouldn't believe what Pastor Terry said to me. But actually what Jesus was saying was very consistent. As Elma Fudd would say, very, very consistent. Very consistent with Jesus' words as he walked and taught them earlier. Go with me to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, you Bible scholars will recognize this is a section of Scripture where Jesus is pointing out the signs that are going to be offered up at the end of the age or those things which are going to transpire 
at the end of the age. And he teaches beginning around verse 36 of Matthew 24. No one knows about that day. And this is well before our, our time over in Acts or our time in Luke 24. But Jesus says, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. He had already told them this. Look at verse 42 of Matthew 24. Therefore, keep watch. Why? Because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Church, can I see your eyeballs just a moment? Punch your neighbor and wake him up or her. He said you need to be on the watch. Why? Because you don't know when the Lord's going to come back. Watch this. I had a conversation with an individual this week. In fact, I've had a very pastoral week. It was wonderful, a lot of opportunities. But I had a conversation with one person this week, and they said something, like, well, you know, to hear some people tell it, you'd think the world was coming to an end. And I said, well, you know, it is at some point in time. And that person went, Pfft. are you kidding me? Church member, by the way, Interesting. Keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Verse 44. So you also must be ready. How many of you know when Jesus says something two or three times in the same little paragraph? He's serious. He doesn't repeat himself because he forgot what he said a while ago. He doesn't forget anything. I can't remember anything. He doesn't forget anything. You also must be ready. Why? He says it again. Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Wow. If you turn on over to Matthew 25, same teaching. It's kind of broken up uh, for us Englishers into chapters and verses. But it's the same teaching Jesus says in verse 13. Therefore keep watch. Why? Because you do not know the day or the hour. Trying to show you something here. In John's gospel, another time, another place, Jesus replied to a group. You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Any of you parents ever said that to your children? You don't understand why I'm taking my belt off now. But at some point in time, you'll get it. I love having that speech to my kids. Don't make me take my belt off. You're not going to, this hurt me more than it does you. <laughs> when I was a kid, I'm like, yeah, right. Now, I don't believe that uh, in some respect. But you, you, you dig what I'm saying. Let me get back to the, the task at hand. Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. In John chapter 16, verse number 12, a little later, Jesus says, I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear. I've got much more to say to you apostles, but I can't tell you now, it's more than you can bear. Ooh. Said that to say this, headed to number six on your study notes. Beloved, God is, watch this, it's another word you need to know, God is omniscient. Omniscience. Comprised of two words, omni and shunts, or science. Omni meaning all, Science meaning knowledge. All knowledge. How many of you know that God Almighty is all knowing? Now watch this. You will not find the word omniscience in the scriptures. But you sure will find the concept I'm going to show you. It's a, a man-made term to capture the essence of the character of God, which is might near impossible to do. But I... Just to cut to the chase, let me say this to you. Beloved, there is not one thing that God doesn't know. Not nary a thing about me or you or anything else. Hebrews 4.13 says this. In Hebrews 4, like 10, 11, 12. Man, those are some good verses. I'd encourage you to read them. But verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Pastor Terry, what about the other night when I... Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Pastor Terry, what about what I'm thinking about doing this afternoon when you ain't looking? Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Check it out, beloved. Some people need to hear this. 
Pastor Terry is not going to judge you on judgment day. I appreciate the respect people offer me from time to time when they curse profusely and then look at me like, didn't realize you was there, Pastor, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. But I'm not the judge. You realize that God heard you talking like that? Would you kiss your girlfriend with a mouth that talks like that? I mean, what in the world is that all about? Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. You know who you're going to give account to? God. Now watch this. If you're in Christ Jesus, that's a good thing. There's two judgments. A lot of people don't know this. There's a great white throne judgment. The sinners are going to go before that great white throne judgment. There's the beamer, the judgment seat of Christ. Those who are in Christ are going to be judged in Christ if he is righteous and he is and I am in him then what does that make me so boys and girls if you ain't if you isn't in him you better get in him and stay in him and don't keep jumping out like some people well, I want to be in there on Sunday but Saturday I'm going to kind of take a little break because well remember Pastor Terry might not be there on Saturday night but Jesus is watching you. God sees this stuff. Now, here's what I want you to get. And I'm going to try to wrap this up in the next half an hour, so listen closely so I don't have to drag this out. Though I imagine that God could, if he deemed it necessary, pour all his knowledge into a chosen vessel, namely, a man, but he never has. And the exception would be his son. We could argue, we could talk about that. Perhaps we'll preach about that at another point in time. But I'm talking about other men. He never has poured all his knowledge into another man. And it doesn't seem unreasonable to me to say that he never will. Can you imagine a finite human being? The created one containing all that God knows? Can you imagine the God of heaven pouring everything he knows into this little pea brain of mine? It's a ridiculous notion, isn't it? Say yes. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's right. Listen to Job. Job gives us this, chapter 36 around verse 26. Job says, how great is God beyond our understanding. The number of his years is past finding out. Who can understand how he spreads out the clouds, how he thunders from his pavilion? Now watch this. I'm going to see if I can make a point here in the next couple of study notes. Headed to number seven right now. It, or is it unreasonable to suggest to you that God reveals His purpose and plan according to a divine strategy. And that divine strategy through agents, His righteous, He righteously determines will utilize that revelation in accord with His strategy. Does that make sense? I hope so because I'm not sure I could say that again. Let me illustrate to you what I'm trying to say. How many of you know that often children ask some very complicated questions? Such as, Mommy or Daddy, where do little babies come from? Sometimes we little lads ask those questions. Where do little babies come from? Now just to cut to the chase, Everybody knows the answer to that question is, go ask your mama. Say amen right there. That's what I'm talking about. Mama got to earn her keep around here somewhere or another. I trust that you can realize, and I'm kidding, by the way. I'm not really a male chauvinist. I just appear that way sometimes. I love women. My mama was a woman, and I married one. Say amen right there. That's what I'm talking about. 
I trust that you can realize in the words of Solomon, there is a time and place for what, church? For everything. There is a time and a place for the infamous discourse on the birds and the bees. But also there's a time to be silent about such delicate subjects. Without going into a lot of detail, you know that when an 18-month-old or a 24-month-old asks certain questions, you have to determine as a parent, you know, are they ready for this or not? I have the answer, but are they ready for this or not? Is it too much for them right now? We have to be discerning about the proper time to divulge certain information to a child. Wave at me if you know what I'm talking about. In fact, Justin, how old is Justin? 28, and I'm thinking when he turns 30, we're going to sit down and have a long talk. There's a time and place for everything, but I'm trying to protect him at this point. I'm kidding. Fathers, I had that talk with my boys. I encourage you to have that talk with your boys. If they don't get it, send them to mama. Listen. Number eight on your study notes. Often, I told you that to tell you this, often Christ followers spend way too much time inquiring about things that haven't yet found their season. Our text begins to elaborate on one of those times. Will you note with me Jesus' answer to the question, is it time? His answer to the question was a very significant fundamental truth which would serve to write their attitude and their focus if they would so choose to embrace it. Here's the New International Version. Jesus, is it time? The New International Version would put it this way. Hey, don't all y'all concern yourself with the ins and outs of things that's fully in the control and timing of the Lord God Almighty. Instead, here's what all y'all should concern yourself with. Look at verse 8. Is it time? And he says, you don't need to concern yourself with that. But verse 8, he says, but. Watch this, church. Instead, is it time? You don't need to concern yourself with that. But here's what you do need to concern yourself with. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Wow. Can I encourage you? Fill in number nine with me. Can you be encouraged not to make God's job? Now I'm going to explain that just a little bit. Can you be encouraged not to make God's job your primary focus. I'm not talking about God's plan, but God's job. Those things that only God can do. Those things that only God knows about. Please do not make that your primary focus. Because if you do, every time you do, you're going to hear something like this. Y'all don't concern yourself with that. Don't be asking those questions. But, Here's what I want you to do. Don't you be concerned with my job, but here's your job. God says, I'm going to put my power, His power. That is incredible to me. I'm going to put my power, dunamis. Also, authority was granted in Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to put that in you for an express purpose. Let me see your eyeballs, Christians. Listen. So many today are perched on church pews and church chairs and, and they're not being taught this. They don't get this. Beloved, being born again means something. Something takes place inside a person that's born again. And I believe when you experience the born again reality, then Holy Spirit begins to dwell within you. Same Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead and whisked him up into the clouds. God says, I'm going to put that Holy Spirit in you. Now watch this. I'm very much aware that there are people all over the world today and even some people in our own neck of the woods that will try to convince you that that message was only for the apostles. And as soon as they drew their last breath, that was over. 
That's insane. That's ridiculous. Some of these people need to read the Bible for crying out loud. In particular, Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2 and then the rest of the Bible. God says, I'm going to put my spirit in you and you will be my witnesses. It's for an express purpose to enable us and to equip us to be a witness. You know what a witness is? Yes, Pastor, and I was hoping you wouldn't talk about this because I'm such a bashful person. And I'm not like you, Pastor Terry. I'm not an extrovert. You'll never believe it, but neither am I. I say, I don't believe it. I'm just saying. Oh, this is a witness. He doesn't say, beloved, you've got to go out witnessing. He says he's going to make you a witness. Just like someone who goes to court and the judge says, what do you know? What happened? And if, you're, if you watch Judge Judy like I do, Judge Judy is a real cutie. If you watch Judge Judy, you know that the second you say, well, so-and-so said to me, boy, Judge Judy gets ticked off. I don't care what, they, what you thought they said. What they want to know is, what do you know? What did you see? That's what a witness does. Listen to me. In particular, if you're a timid person, not a very aggressive person, you're an, an introvert, beloved, if God Almighty has forgiven your sins and changed your spirit like he has changed mine, then you know it. Some people have told me from time to time, I, don't, I can't remember the time. I don't know if I've been born again. Beloved, I'm not, I don't mean to be condescending, but I'm going to tell you what. I seriously wonder if you have been born again, if you don't know. I know. Woo, glory. I remember coming from that corner of the Satspa Hall Friends Church. It wasn't that corner, but it was a corner like that. And come down to the altar at the Satspa Hall Church years ago and knelt down and prayed, and the evangelist prayed with me. God changed my insides. I got up from that thing, from that altar, not that thing, with a different feeling inside of me. And it wasn't just a feeling. There's something different in there. It's jumping up and down right now. I want you to get out. It would like to preach on another hour. But your setter's gone. A witness tells what they know. Let me ask you this. I'm going to try to wrap this up. Good gracious. You know, why is it you just get to getting it when it's time to eat? And like, Pastor, I can't hear you because my neighbor's stomach is growling so loud. <laughs> I was at a funeral not long ago. I trust this is appropriate to tell this. I thought there for a moment the rapture had occurred. I tell you, I, somebody's stomach was growling in that place. I don't even remember where it was. I hope it, hope it wasn't one that I was involved in, but I'm like, good glory, they ought to hand it out some nabs before this funeral. Say amen right there. <laughs> Anybody want a Coke? <laughs> That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Are you filled with the Spirit? Are you filled with the Spirit? And what is your primary responsibility? What is your primary focus? Is your primary focus, Spirit-filled person, God's responsibility or your responsibility? Look at verse 9 of our text reading, text passage. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. I want you to note that it doesn't say, and beloved, he just disappeared. It does not say that. He just disappeared as they stood there with mouth agape. It says he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. He was still there, but they couldn't see him. Why? Because the cloud hid him from their sight. I told you the other week, I've had that experience of going through the clouds. It can happen. I didn't go through the clouds like Jesus yet. 
Looking forward to it, but it hid him. Now, I want you to look at verse 11. There were some angels who appeared, and they said to those standing there, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? That was a good question. And I understand them standing there looking into the sky. I mean, if there's a dude standing there, and, and all of a sudden he just went on up through the clouds, I probably would be standing there looking up. Or like, did you see that? Or, whoa, how cool is that? But they, they, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. He went through the clouds. How's he going to come back? He's going to come back in the same way. Now, I want you to think about that in the context of verse 8. Jesus said, don't y'all worry about God's job. Don't, don't concern yourself with God's job. Here's what you need to do. You need to be sure you're filled with the Spirit and understand the purpose of that is to be a witness for me. And you need to do that. And by the way, don't just stand around here gawking, looking up into the sky, waiting on me to come back. Some people do that, you know. Well, beloved, we're going to wrap it up right there tonight. Let me reiterate to you that which we said at the closing part of the message. When Jesus left this earth, there really wasn't a lot of fanfare. Now, we just come through the Easter season. We've talked about the crucifixion, the resurrection, and it seemed to be pretty melodramatic. But when he left, there wasn't a lot of fanfare, but there was a warning. We were told, just as he left, he's coming back. And the question I want to leave you with tonight, and this is a sobering question, are you living as though he's coming back? Many say they believe that he is. Sometimes I wonder the way they live their life. Are you living your life in such a fashion to live after Jesus and telling others about Jesus and warning others, not only by your words, but your life, about his return. When he comes back, beloved, he's going to take people to be with him for all eternity. That's what we seem to be living for and longing for and waiting for. Sounds like an old-fashioned, archaic message. And in many respects, it is. But it's an eternal message, one, that we want to tr uh, one I trust that we're challenging you with. Do you know Christ? Have you made a decision for Christ? Are you following after him? If not, I want to be an encouragement to you to read, study the Bible, the Word of God, and know how that you might be born again and come to know God in all his fullness and how he desires for you to live out your life. That's the purpose of this program, to encourage you to discover God's purpose and plan for your life. Well, in an attempt to do that, we meet Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, our morning worship celebration each and every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We also have what we call Family Ministries Night, Wednesday night. There's a lot of activity that takes place, something for the children, the adults, and all those in between, if there are those in between. But that's Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We would love to have you come out and be a part of any and all of those activities. We do have a website. There's some helpful information there. Web address is there on the screen. Give it a look, see. The messages that you hear on New Life Telecast, for the most part, you can find them on our website as well as some other uh, interesting and helpful links. Well, according to the old watch on the wrist, my time is completely gone. I'm going to have to get out of here. Trust you're going to have a great week. I'm Terry Knight, and reminding you, my friends, that if you don't live it, you don't have it.